Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Back in October of 2014, uh, not long after the first of two really successful trade missions to Israel, I was asked to speak at a CJP event in Boston uh, as the featured speaker, I might add. And my happy assignment was to report on the exceptional economic and cultural result, results of our work to strengthen ties with Israel and the region. At the podium just before me, a young Israeli man spoke about his experience serving in the IDF as a soldier and how he had come uh, to realize the primary importance of building relationships of trust and understanding between Israelis and Palestinians to create, in a phrase I will never forget, an infrastructure of hope. Now that young man was supposed to be the warm-up act for me, but he stole the show and my heart. He captured my attention and my admiration. And when my turn came, I put my notes aside and told the audience that I want to bet on whatever this young man is trying to do. And so I have. In the years since, I've supported and worked with him on a remarkable initiative, really the foundations of that infrastructure of hope. And I'm not the only one impressed by what he has accomplished. Late last year, Forbes magazine named him one of their top 30 social entrepreneurs under 30. And I think you will be impressed today as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the founder and executive director of Our Generation Speaks, Ohad El Hello. Thank you, Governor Patrick. He's the chair of our board from the very beginning. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, APAC. I'm pleased to be here today to address APAC, an organization that has accomplished much in support of America, Israel, and the Jewish people. I'm the founder and CEO of Our Generation Speaks, a program which began in 2015 and is dedicated to the proposition that Israelis and Palestinians can work together to create a more peaceful and prosperous future. Now, how did this happen? My military service introduced me firsthand to the complexities of our region. I wasn't altogether certain what to do about it until I came to Boston, until I came to Brandeis. Brandeis. It was there that I came to believe that all things were possible. I was comforted by the warm embrace of a politically diverse Jewish community that worked tirelessly to build bridges of understanding between frequently hostile communities. I studied at Brandeis with students from every social, economic, ethnic, and religious background, and I saw that they shared many of the same dreams. And I saw how the extraordinary creativity of young entrepreneurs in Boston's university and business communities prompted a shared economic reality that promised security in uncertain times. I believe that the overwhelming majority of humanity share the same aspirations, to live in peace and security in a place where their children can aspire to a better future. It transcends politics. We all want peace and security. We all need peace and security. So I resolved to do something about it. I realized that I had very little knowledge of Palestinians and no opportunities to interact with them unless on active duty. I understood that nothing would change unless we created authentic opportunities to interact with each other. I wanted to create an infrastructure of hope on both sides because I knew that only then could we build trust and finally cooperation. With the support of Brandeis and the Kraft family, we created a program that brings Israelis and Palestinian entrepreneurs to Boston for three months each summer. 
The, li <laughs> they live together and they learn about each other's lives and narratives. They study entrepreneurship, they form teams, and they create businesses. Since its inception, we've launched seven startups and graduated 46 alumni, all dedicated to working together to change the dynamic in a region. One venture provides highly trained Palestinian software engineers to Israeli high-tech companies scrambling for such help. Another does genetic education and testing of Israeli Bedouins to reduce the incidence of genetic diseases. A third venture brings solar technology to areas in a region that have limited electric power, also in Gaza. To date, our companies have raised more than $1 million and we have received the 2017 New England Innovation Award. Now, beyond financial success, our generation speaks believes, I believe, that when people have common goals, when they rely upon each other to feed their families, when they're actual partners, when they work together every single day, they can't help but know each other. And when you truly know another person, hope can replace hate. Now, this is not a cure-all, but it's a great place to start. As the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start planting trees. I do not know how to resolve the seemingly unbridgeable conflict between our peoples. There isn't a simple solution or magic trick. I and many like me know that the status quo isn't working nor sustainable. Resolving the conflict demands engagement. We must continue to find opportunities for both sides to speak, to speak about anything, to speak about everything, to hear each other. To solve the conflict between us calls for our honesty and engagement. And it calls for realization that a situation is not working for either side. A solution calls for new thinking based on the ancient Jewish values of compassion and empathy. We need to plant a new tree grounded in hope and based on these principles. Our generation, my generation, must step forward and begin the long road to shared trust. After all, in 20 years, it's going to be my generation that is tasked with both the burden and the opportunity to lead. We must create a foundation now so my generation can advance, sustain, and protect a lasting peace. It begins with interaction, then comes trust. Trust leads to civic and economic engagement, and this is how we move the needle. Thank you all very much.